In this video, we will talk about activation procedures. Hyperventilation and intermittent photic stimulation are activation procedures intended to elicit epileptiform discharges and potentially seizures in susceptible patients. In hyperventilation, patients are asked to breathe deeply in and out through their mouth, ensuring as much air is expelled during expiration as possible. This is done for about 3 minutes, with a respiratory rate of approximately 20 to 30 breaths per minute. The patient can stop hyperventilation, if they are uncomfortable. A single lead, ECG, should be recorded during hyperventilation. Mild tachycardia is considered normal, but hyperventilation should be stopped, if the patient develops chest pain, ST changes, or, other rhythm disturbances on the ECG. Normal response, consists of generalized slow waves, that may begin, soon after the onset of hyperventilation, and, it ends within one minute after the patient stops hyperventilating. Hyperventilation responses, are age-dependent. They are most pronounced, in children and teenagers. Hyperventilation, is considered as most powerful activation procedure, to elicit absence seizures, or, as this EEG shows, generalized 3 Hz spike and wave discharges. As per the British Society of Clinical Neurophysiology guidelines, the absolute contraindications to hyperventilation include History of intracranial hemorrhage, or, myocardial infarction in last one year Significant cardiac disease, like unstable angina, pulmonary disease, with breathlessness at rest, and sickle cell disease or trait Intermittent photic stimulation, requires the patient, to look at a series of flashing lights of varying frequency with periods of eyes open and eyes closed. Photic stimulation is performed at least three minutes after the cessation of hyperventilation. Stroboscope is used to produce the flashes. Each flash is of 10 microseconds in duration. The lamp is placed 30 centimeters in front of the patient's eyes. Flashes are given for about five seconds and there is a gap of five seconds between two stimulations. Photic stimulation usually does not elicit any change in the background activity in most individuals. When background changes are noted, they are categorized as photic driving, photomyogenic, and photoperoxysmal. Photic driving response consists of rhythmic activity in parieto-occipital region. It is time-locked to stimulus. It represents visual evoked potentials produced by each flash of light. Evoked potentials are neuroelectric responses to sensory stimuli that can be recorded from scalp using averaging techniques. Photomyogenic response is a muscle artifact that is usually maximal in the FP1 and FP2 electrodes. At times, the patient may have visible fluttering of eyelids. It is time locked to stimulus. It is a nonspecific finding and has little clinical significance. Photoconvulsive response consist of spikes and other epileptiform activity. They usually show no clear relationship to the stimulus frequency. JME is the most common form of primary generalized epilepsy associated with photoconvulsive response. Relative contraindications to photic stimulation include photophobia associated with conditions such as migraine, meningitis or encephalitis. Sleep deprivation may also be used to increase the yield of EEGs. In patients with epilepsy, sleep deprivation increases the frequency of detection of epileptiform discharges. For adults, sleep deprivation is carried out by not sleeping a night before, preferably without caffeine-containing beverages, and EEG is done in the morning as the patient falls asleep. <laughs>